I got asked this question a long time ago in a job interview, and it actually sat with me for so long that I've decided to make a video about it today. This is almost a couple years later. The question was, write a program in C that will determine if the stack grows up or down for the computer architecture you're working on. I found the question so profound because it allowed the interviewer to get so much information about the candidate's knowledge with just a couple lines of code. It allowed them to know if the interviewee even knew what a stack was, if they knew how to code in C, and if they knew how under the hood what the C code does, and if they could produce the code to answer the question. And hey guys, also if you're new here, my name is Level Learning. We talk about all things low level programming like C, Rust, and Assembly. If you like that kind of stuff, follow along with me and also hit the sub button. So how would you tackle this problem? How do we determine if the architecture we're living on has a stack that grows up or down? First, we have to talk about what the stack actually is. And I made other videos about that, but put basically, when the CPU goes in between functions, it creates stack frames or region of memory to address its local variables. Now, on most computer architectures, the stack actually grows negatively in the negative direction. It becomes more negative as it gets bigger but this may not be the case for all computer architectures. Some of them may actually add to the stack pointer as the stack gets bigger. So we have to write a function to figure out what direction is our stack growing. We'll start here with this C code. And what this code does is it calls the up or down function. If up or down returns true, then it grows up. If up or down returns false, then it grows down. I had to kind of sneak in my cheeky ternary operator in there. I know how much we all love those very much. The function will return up if positive, down if negative. I think we should probably define also what up means. So up means that the stack, as it grows, the address of the stack frame is increasing. And as the stack grows down, it is becoming more negative. So as it gets bigger, the top of it becomes more negative. This is actually how Intel behaves by default. The stack grows negatively towards the heap. Obviously, it has two to the power of 64 bytes generally to work with, so it's not a big issue. Um, but this is how it's happening under the hood. But again, some other architectures may behave this way. So we want to figure out how to check for that. Now, the way that you could probably check for it pretty simply, the one that a lot of people go to by default, and I went to by default in the interview, is you on the stack, you declare two variables, right? So here we have int x and int y. They have undefined values. I guess we could say zero to get rid of all the security people in the comments. Um, and what will happen here is it'll allocate room first on the top of the stack for X and then under it, just in our notional picture, picture your stack of plates, the address Y. So then we could say if X is greater than Y, and again, we're not talking the values of X, we're talking the addresses of X. If X is greater than Y, then what we can do is just return true because that means that X is on top, X is more negative and true is a lowercase t here. Otherwise, we're just going to return false, right? So what will happen is if X is growing up, it is getting more positive. But if X is growing down, it's becoming more negative. So let's check this out and have to also include standard bool because C by default does not know what the word true means. Okay, so this actually worked because the stack on the architecture that I'm on, the Intel assembly architecture, does grow down. This code does have actually a few problems. First of all, we are not labeling these as volatile variables, so there may be a case where the compiler does some optimizations here. So we do want to also throw the volatile keyword into these variables to make sure that the assembler does not try to optimize them in any fancy ways. Now, can you think of another assumption we're making with this problem by doing it this way? So again, in our notional picture of the stack here, and I'll make another comment block to kind of describe this, we are assuming that when the assembler creates the stack, it creates room for X on our notional top. And then underneath that, we create room uh, beneath it for our notional Y. And then we're just trying to see which one is more negative and returning that value. But the assumption we're making here is that the assembler is putting it in that order. It may not. It may, for some other optimization reason, just put X below. Maybe it's doing a, you know, a FIFO versus a, a first in last out when it's making the assembly, the, the stack allocations. So this is not the most efficient way to do it. I want to see if you can think of another way to check if our stack is growing up or down. Let me know. OK, you ready for it? The way we're going to do this is through a little bit of recursion. Now, let me explain to you what we're going to do here. When we use variables in C, we do make room for them on the stack. However, we also use the stack to call additional functions. So if I have up or down call itself, that will produce a new stack frame for its variables in some location. So what we can actually do is pass around a variable in between up or down to itself and then compare the address of those two variables. Because we do it that way, we'll have knowledge about the address of one stack frame versus the other, and we can return whether one is greater than the other. So let me walk through how that works right now. 
Okay, you ready? The solution for this is really cool. So we have made up or down a recursive function. Now I know if recursion scares you, don't worry about it. It's not that bad. All you have to think about is a base case and a non-base case, the recursive case. So what we'll do is we'll start with our recursive case where we call up or down and give it a null pointer, meaning I have no information about the stack at this point. So we'll go into our function here. And again, bool up or down now takes an int pointer. We passed it null for the first one. And we have an integer x on the stack. If there is no other variable, meaning that we have no information about the stack yet, we have to generate information ourselves with X. We'll just return up or down the address of X. We'll return up or down with the address of X. That will enter another layer of up or down where now the int other is set. We'll say up or down, we'll now go to the other case and all we're gonna say, and again, we're in a new stack frame here. We've created another stack frame because we called the function again. And we say return if this variable, the, nut, the one that's above it in our notional directionless stack frame, return if the address of that variable is greater than the other. That will come back to the base case, it'll return here, and that'll come out our up or down case. By using simple recursion, we can solve this problem really cleanly and have a way that can't get optimized out because we're doing recursive functions. So let's go ahead and compile this and see what trouble we get into. And we find that the stack frame, as it's supposed to, still grows down. So what do you think? This one little question and a couple lines of C may just reveal if we know how stacks work, how C works, how calling conventions work, and a lot of really interesting things underneath the hood as it relates to computer architecture and low level programming. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoy these kinds of problems, go check out my website, pwnbounty.com, description below. And if you like to solve these kinds of challenges, I'll be putting up challenges like this. And if you solve it and submit a write-up, you might even get a job. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.